Welcome to this MATLAB help video. In this code, we're going to be using some code for analyzing motion capture data from a motion capture lab. And today we're going to be talking about how to deal with uh, creating a time vector that's a flexible length in your code. We're using this code that we've already talked about in other videos. So in the first section here, I have parameters for loading the data with a file path and file names. I've downloaded this data to this working directory. So you'll need to change those things in your code based on where you're working. I have the section where I'm pre-allocating memory for empty variables in my loop so that my variables don't grow every time uh, they, I go around the loop. And then I have this section of code here where we're loading files in the loop. So we've talked through this in previous codes, how we load the data in by using string cat, how we get our variables, our data out of the structures that it's in and figure out what the name of that structure is into this data vector. And then uh, today we're going to be talking about So talked about this loop before, how you load the data in using string cat with the um, parameters for loading data earlier on, and then how you get that data into, you figure out what the name of your structures are inside it and how you get that into a working uh, variable that you can manipulate. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna extract time information. So I've already run this code. You can see there's variables in my workspace here but we'll go ahead and run it again just to make sure, just to make sure everything is clear. And right now we open it, we call a figure at the beginning. So it opens this figure that um, I'm just gonna close for right now. So we're focusing on extracting time information. And I don't wanna have to type in every time all of my parameters, because if I have a data from a different set of force plates or I change the settings on my force plate, I don't wanna have to manually code that in every time. So down here at the command prompt, I'm going to type vec and hit enter. I see that vec is a structure with fields and it lists the fields and there's a couple of fields here that I'm particularly interested in. Uh, frames and frame rate except we're actually talking right now about force. So the frames and the frame rate here refer to the motion capture data for this particular um, data set that we're using. If I do vec.force I'll see that the force plate actually has its own frequency sampling frequency and number of samples that are different than what the motion capture system has. So there are multiples, and there's 482 frames, but there's uh, 4,820 samples because we were sampling at 1,000 hertz for the frequency force plate and only 100 hertz for the motion capture system. So what I want to do is I want to extract this frequency from the structure and I want to extract the number of samples from the structure. So up here in our time information, I'm gonna call, or I'm gonna create a variable called freak which I'm going to define as vec.force.frequency. And that should give me a variable that's just my frequency. It should be 1,000. And then I'm going to create a variable that's dt that's just 1 over the frequency, which would be the um, time step for my data. Then I'm going to get the number of frames. So down here in the command window, the command window, the number of samples. So I'm going to call this n points, because this is the number of data points that we have, and vec.force.nr of samples gives me the number of points. And we'll just go ahead and run these lines. I'm going to copy and paste them from my code here, run them at the command prompt hit enter just to make sure they work before we commit to going further here. So now I want to make a time vector. I'm going to make my time vector by saying going from zero. We always start time at zero. I'm going to step by dt and then I'm going to go to the number of points that I have except that if I start it, the number of points starts counting at one and if I start counting my time at zero I need to shift backwards once. So I'm going to do that by doing number of points minus one but I don't want to go, but number of points is going to be 4,000 or 820. And I don't want to go from 0 to 4,820 seconds. I want to go to 4.8 seconds. So then I'm going to multiply this by dt to create a time vector that goes from 0 to 4.8 seconds in time steps of dt. And then I can take this and I can plot this as a function or time as a function or 
force is a function of time. But to do that, um, my force here, Fz, is going to, comes out as a 4,820 by one double. Um, and this is my personal preference that you have data in variables, your time sequence goes down your rows and your columns are individual trials. Just makes sense to me. It's probably because that's mostly how Excel thinks about it. Um, but you can do it the other way. We're gonna, for consistency's sake, do it that way where our uh, time series goes down the number of rows and each column is a new trial. So uh, right now over here in the window, you see that time is a one by 4,820 double and FZ is a 4,820 by one double. So if I try and plot those against each other, MATLAB's gonna be upset. So to fix that problem, I'm just gonna wrap my time vector here in parentheses and use a single quote mark tick to transpose my time vector. And now if I run this line down at the command prompt just to check it, time, see that my time over here is now 4,820 by one. So now I can go down here and plot time comma FZ, the force in the vertical direction, and we should get, oh, we should, do, we'll do that at the command window since we're not running the code right now. We should get a plot that looks like force as a function of time. Obviously there's no labels on this plot. It needs to be cleaned up and fixed, but that gives you an idea of how to plot time on the horizontal axis and force on the vertical axis.